Welcome back to Court TV Live. I'm Ashley Wilcott. And I'm Michael Ayala. We're both here today giving you your front row seat to justice. And we are in Georgia this afternoon where the jury is about to begin deliberating in the burn pile murder trial. Right now, all of the exhibits are being brought into the jury room. And I think there's over a thousand mm -hmm. of them. That's uh, many, many uh, exhibits in that case. And then they will begin their deliberations. And sometimes courts do it differently. I just have to comment, Michael, mm -hmm. and say, okay, ask if you want them. But this one's saying you get all the exhibits and then you start deliberating. Yeah, no question. All right, the mom of four, Melody Ferris, faces life in prison if she's found guilty of shooting her husband in the basement of their home and then burning his body in the yard. But the defense says the 64-year-old wouldn't have been able to move her husband's nearly 300-pound body and say that her son, Scott, had a financial motive to kill his father. And joining us now, Court TV crime and justice correspondent Matt Johnson. Welcome, Matt. Thank you for joining us both. What were some of the takeaways now that we've heard the end of that state's rebuttal closing argument that stood out to you? Yeah, such a powerful day here in the North Atlanta area in this courthouse at Cherokee County after 17, 18 days of testimony and 44 witnesses, and now they're finally getting those exhibits. And the fate of Melody Ferris, this defendant, is soon going to be in the hands of this Georgia jury. The three uh, Ferris children also notably in the gallery today, Chris, Scott, and Emily. Noticeably absent was Amanda, who was a defense witness. Um, they're all seated together for the first time. It was a packed courthouse as prosecutors told the jury that Melody hated her husband, Gary, and one to kill him for the money. Take a listen. This is all the money she would get if Gary died accidentally. Add all those up. Okay, $4.15 million now. The defense wants you to believe she didn't know about it. Naturally, without a will, that house was hers. You cannot tell me she didn't, she thought she was gonna be broke. It's ridiculous. Afterwards, it, it was always about money, money, money. Melody was demanding money. She was trying to get as much money as possible. The Ferris children nodding at times, breaking down at other points of testimony or at least the closing arguments and remarks from prosecutors, especially when they said that Scott should not have been the scapegoat. He had nothing to do with this crime, but yet Melody Ferris would do anything to save herself, including throwing her kids under the bus. Take a listen. These are her children. But as you sit here, she is trying to blame them for this crime. Those are her kids. Let that sink in. She has thrown both her sons, a son-in-law, under the bus for this crime. The murder of her husband, who she betrayed the most. The three Ferris um, children, adult children, and also a lot of the other family members, mainly brothers of the victim, Gary Ferris, who have been in the courtroom each and every day, well, they're all together for the first time now that they're no longer under subpoena and all the evidence is in. So they're milling about the courthouse right now and just waiting to hear what's next and if we get word from the jury. Now, Matt, you know, I, I was impressed by the defense's closing argument, but you never know how it's going over unless you're in the courtroom, which you were. So how did their closing go over and what were some of your takeaways? It was really powerful, Michael, um, and the demonstration that this attorney did where he had huge bags of fertilizer and he placed them one by one into the well right in front of the jury box and he slammed them down as he was trying to make a point that he was trying to poke holes in each of the case of the evidence uh, by the state. And then he finally put them all on a tarp and he was trying to demonstrate how the defendant, 120 pounds or so, and he is about 200 pounds would not be capable of moving the body of her husband who was more than 300 pounds and six foot five. Watch this. But I think it starts to become clear why I'm doing this. Why am I dropping these bags? These bags are 40 pounds a piece. I've got a few more bags to go. <laughs> but I want you to know 
<coughs> and it starts from very impossible and you add this up that someone who weighs 120 pounds can move this this is 320 pounds I am 185 pounds. And that's all I have. Yeah, members of the gallery, um, I'm seated in the back row, but a lot of people were jumping in their seat when that first bag hit the ground. It startled a lot of people because, again, you could hear a pin drop in this packed courtroom. And another interesting thing, um, very dynamic, that the defense team did was during their whole presentation, they had the words not guilty uh, blinking up on the monitors in the, in the courtroom. Oh, interesting. Yes, Matt. It's fascinating to hear about these closing arguments. Now tell us, because we see the clocks back up, they've only been deliberating now actually four minutes. Tell us more about the jury deliberations, please, sir. Okay, so this is not a sequestered jury. They have the ability to go as late as they want tonight, but that might only be until 9 or 10 o'clock. The judge is checking with court staff to see how late security can be here, but they'll close the front doors, uh, mind you. Um, they're going to be back behind closed doors. The um, bailiffs are going to check in on this jury at around dinner time, around 6 o'clock or so, to see how late they want to go today. And um, they also have the ability to come back tomorrow and they can just pick up their deliberation but they're choosing to have a shorter day tomorrow because of the Halloween holiday. Here's what we know about the jury makeup. The four alternates were selected, so we have a split. Six men and six women are the deliberating jury in this case. And again, we are told that all parties must stay near the courthouse in case there is a question or a verdict. They have to be here within 15 minutes. All right, Matt Johnson, thank you so much for that report.